Hello, this is Brother Kevin coming to you with the third um, teaching in our series of uh, prayer. And the prayer model we're using is 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, uh, the first verse. Uh, as I said, that it's going to be hard to cover uh, all the areas of prayer, but I just wanted to pick maybe two or three in this small, you know, 10 minute uh, teaching that will be very useful to you. Uh, I would like to suggest that before we even get started, I want to talk about the prayer of proclamation. Now, this is going to be similar to almost everything else that I'll do in this session. And the reason why I'm picking it is because you need to start with a basis of knowing your rights and privileges as a Christian and also knowing who your God is according to the Word. God is exactly what His Word says that He is. And so when we know that, and it gets down into our hearts, we become enlightened by that word. Okay, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So this is what I strongly suggest to all of you who are listening to these teachings. Speak the word. Now I'm not talking about what some of you might call name it and claim it. That's a very negative thing to say, because to tell you the truth, we are to proclaim the Word of God. And just because a few people or a few ministries took it to extreme and charlatans and took people's money doesn't take away from the truth of God's Word. We are to confess it. We are to proclaim it. We are to declare the Word of God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Say it with me. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven say this with me these are confessions and proclamations say this with me also I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me say this with me that God is able to work all grace towards me that I having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Say this with me, that our God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness according to the power of the knowledge of God within us. And he has given to us great and exceedingly great, I should say, precious promises that by these we would have access to the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is an example of proclaiming the word. Let this be a part of your prayer life. Let this be a part of what you do. This is not just going to affect your prayer life. This will affect everything you do as you learn to stick the bit of the word of God in your mouth. Now, I strongly suggest that you don't just study and read. I suggest that you speak it out loud. That's right. Let your, your friends hear it. Let your parents hear it. Let your children hear it. Let people hear it. The Word of God is ferocious. And what I mean by that is it is, it is the power of God is the salvation. That's what Paul says. I am never ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. So begin with your verses, your Bible verses, commit them to memory and speak them out. And of course, do whatever is in them that you're to do. Hallelujah. Now, this is a very important foundation to lay because in the next one is the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith, it's, it's probably mother verse is in Mark 11, 23 and 24. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he, hath, which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now it's very important when you're moving into prayer of faith, that you believe you receive it before you even start. This is extremely important. In other words, praying the prayer of faith is releasing God's promises through the name of Jesus, His healing power through the name of Jesus. In James 5, it actually says that the prayer of faith will save the sick. 
Oh, so it's not me that's saving the sick. No, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith, or I should say this. Believing that you will receive will save the sick. And if that person has committed any sins, it shall be forgiven them. So it's very important to get down in your heart and let it come down in your mouth. This is the heart and mouth time. It's ex extremely important. As the scripture said, as I believe, so I speak. So see that tie between the word of God. Now I've used the prayer of faith more than anything I've ever done, both in public ministry as well as family ministry. And I've used the prayer of faith more than any other thing that I know of as far as reaching out to others. And then getting into deliverance, let me tell you something about demonic powers. God expects us to contend with them and to cast evil spirits out. But you need to understand that it works on the same premise of the prayer of, of, the prayer of faith, but there are some things that you need to know for encouragement. And let, let me tell you something. It's like there's a promise in Revelations 12 that says, we overcome Satan's forces by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives to the death. That blood, coupled with the word of God in the name of Jesus, is all you need to deal with demon powers. Jesus Christ is the name given unto men by which they, which they are saved. It is also the name that every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is the risen Lord of glory, of whom I worship. Hallelujah. That demon might not want to bow. But he has to. He doesn't have a choice. Hallelujah. Now also in Luke's gospel it says, and this is what the people said, what strange thing, what matter of thing is this? That with a word he is able to cast out the unclean spirits and they obey him. Now it didn't say that Jesus hollered, but it said with a word Jesus used his divine authority that the Father gave him to cast out demon spirits. I'm going to tell you, if you want to learn anything as a, as a Christian worker or as a minister or anything, learn to hide behind the word, the cross, the blood, the rest, everything that God has provided. Uh, God never expects me to have, all, to have it all together or to have the strength. What he does expect is for me to trust his word. So whether you're starting out with prayers of confession or whether you're praying the prayer of faith or whether you're moving in deliverance because these are all prayers. You might say, well, I thought this was going to be my personal prayer time. No, your personal prayer time will still consist of reaching out to others. Why? Because when you go and pray, he's going to tell you, go out and minister and pray for this person. Go out and cast out this devil. Now, there are times when you can do spiritual warfare right in your private uh, room and you can cast out the devil. God might show you some situations on the job or situations even in your church or community and he might tell you to go ahead and do warfare and cast out these demon powers and pull those strongholds down. Okay, but I want to introduce you to that to the type of praying that's not necessarily asking as you can see. But this type of praying is commanding. It's declaring it's agreeing with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. His kingdom come, His will done in the name of Jesus to the glory of our God, our Father. And you know, I keep the word of God always on my lips. I keep the word of God always in my heart. Oh, so between my heart and mouth, there's just the flow of the word of God that never stops. That's what makes me equipped for ministry wherever I go. Now, when you begin to stand on the promises of God for your personal walk, or your personal life, you're going to be using the same things. Find those confessions. Find the promises that are already in the Word and begin to speak them. It is the Word that will change the atmosphere. No, you don't change nothing. The Word does. You see, God is the Creator. We are not creators. Now, we are creative, but God is the only Creator. We're only going to create what God has given us the power to create. Only God creates something from nothing. We don't create something from nothing because even if God uses us in ministry and prayer, we can only take what he has given us or already created. So I just want to set that straight. Ain't no I'm no God saying I'm little G. Ain't none of that foolishness. Let me tell you something. I'm happy to be a redeemed man of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, to be God's servant. That's the highest position I could ever aspire, is to be a servant. And so these things I'm sharing with you so that you can serve in your prayer life and also serve others in your prayer life. 
I hope this has been a blessing to you. And may you continue to search for Jesus and continue to let him use you right where you're at. God bless you. Amen.